Hey guys, it's Raul again, and today I will be sharing with you another author highlight, and that is going to be today for the author Don Kurtigich. Now, Don Kurtigich writes YA psychological horror, so if you enjoy that type of genre, this is definitely an author that I highly, highly recommend, but I'm going to get into some details about her books so far and why I think you should check her out. So every now and then, I like doing these kinds of videos on my channel, uh, just kind of highlighting lesser known authors or authors that I really, really enjoy that I've read all of their books so far. So Don Kurtigich uh, currently has three novels out. I've read all three of her novels and she's an author that I feel needs a little bit more recognition here on booktube. I personally haven't seen a lot of people talk about her so that's again why I'm deciding to do a highlight video just to let you guys know about the books that she has out and why I think you guys should check her out. So obviously number one reason would be if you guys enjoy why a psychological horror or psychological horror in general. I feel like even if you don't, you know, you tend to read less YA, more adult, I still feel like you would really enjoy her books because her storylines and her and her content tends to be a little bit darker, especially her most latest one is just super, super dark and it pushes the boundaries of YA completely. Um, but her first book that I have uh, is The Dead House uh, and this is obviously her debut novel and her with a lot of her books you have like kind of this mixed media feeling. So um, obviously a lot of people might know Illuminate by Jade Kristoff and Amy Kaufman. This kind of has that feel so it's like a horror version of Illuminate. So it's got a lot of mixed media, it's told in like different you know, it's got journal entries and, um, you know, kind of creepy things like this where you don't really know what's going on and things are crossed off and, you know, there are um, newspaper clippings and things. So you really get kind of that feel throughout this book where it's just, it's very unique to read. It's very fun. You have all of these different kind of types of writing styles throughout it. Uh, this first book tells the story of this school that's burnt down, these kids die in this fire, and then they find this journal um, in the remains of this fire that from this one girl that goes to the school that kind of starts telling the story of what happened with the kids and with her and a lot of you know kind of mess up things inside her mind she kind of deals with these dual personalities um, and within this story you're kind of going back and forth between her real self and then her kind of made up self that could have possibly had some kind of involvement in this fire. I listened to this one on audiobook and the uh, audiobook is absolutely incredible. It's like a full cast. There are sound effects and music and just a lot of different things to kind of really distinguish and give you that feeling of having this like mixed media type version of an audiobook as well. So whether you read the physical copy or the audiobook, you're going to get a very, very unique experience throughout this book. Um, it's a very, very enjoyable one, very creepy, very atmospheric, very sinister at times. And I think that's one of the reasons why I love Don Kurtigich's writing style so much, just because everything just feels so unsettling when you're reading it. And I just love when books give me kind of that unsettling feeling. And with her second book, And the Trees Crept In, I feel like you get uh, a heightened sense of that kind of instability that you feel within the first one. So that creepiness, is, is just bumped up to 10 within this one. Definitely, uh, the second book follows these two sisters who are running away from something and they go to stay with their aunt who kind of lives in the middle of nowhere. She lives in this big estate that's in the middle of nowhere and when they get there, their aunt doesn't let them leave because she believes that the forest is coming to get them, that the trees are creeping in closer, that there is this man in the forest that wants to kill them. Um, this man has no face, he's very tall and lanky, a la slender man. Um, so yeah, she is kind of keeping them hostage now that they're there and they're going through this whole thing of not knowing if what the aunt is saying is really true, not being able to really escape this house, and all of these strange things that are happening within the minds of these main characters as well. Again, this is a book that I, I just... I was so unsettled reading throughout this entire thing because you don't really know what's going on. You have this main character who you kind of think you know what's going to happen. You, you, at, at least for me, when I was reading this book, I kind of knew where it was going or thought I knew where it was going. And then things kind of take a turn and it's, it completely surprised me in the end. But another one that I really, really enjoy, I feel like Don Kurtigich in her second novel definitely... Um, enhanced her writing ability in this one because I just felt more unsettled in this book than I did for her first novel. And as you guys have probably noticed, um, her books just keep getting 
uh, a little bit more unsettling, as I said, the second book. Her second book was a little bit more unsettling than the first one. And her third novel, Teeth in the Mist, is hands down the most unsettling out of all of Don Kurtigich's books. I recently talked about this book in my March wrap-up because I read it for March Mystery Madness. And this book is probably my favorite YA horror book that I have ever read. This was so well done and just so creepy and atmospheric. This book follows our one location called Mill House in kind of three different time periods. Uh, Mill House in the 1500s when it was first created, in the 1800s when one of our main characters is sent to Mill House to live after her father dies, and then in modern time when our main character then visits Mill House to kind of figure out the mystery revolving around her father's um, kind of madness. So the perspective in the 1500s is just, it's very brief, it's very small, you only get kind of little letters here and there of this woman whose husband is the owner and the builder of Mill House and it's her kind of, you can kind of see her slowly falling into madness as her husband kind of completes this house and the kind of the deal that her husband makes building this house and everything like there's this whole eerie and, and and sinister origin to this house that you can obviously see carry on throughout the rest of this novel our two other perspectives are the main perspectives that we follow um in this book throughout the one in the 1800s follows our main character rowan again she is sent to mill house when her father passes away to kind of learn it's somewhat of an institution at that point so there are other kids there and everything there's a doctor that's kind of studying them and there are a lot of creepy things going on when she gets there and things just like take a turn for the worse. Like you're you're feeling unsettled at the very beginning when she makes it to Mill House and then eventually things just get super dark and super crazy and then you have our modern day perspective that follows our main character Zoe and Zoe's father um, was apparently told on his birth certificate or at least on his birth certificate it says that he was born at Mill House which he suspects is a lie because Mill House at this point um, in modern times has been closed for about a hundred years or so um, at this point so there's no way her father could have been born at Mill House um, he takes a trip to Mill House and comes back and slowly begins to lose his memory and go crazy at this point you know he's kind of completely lost his mind has absolutely no memory of anybody around him so Zoe goes to Mill House to kind of discover what happened to her father what could have possibly um, caused him to become the way that he is now. So with these two different perspectives, obviously you just have this insane story of this house that is just completely like the worst. Um, I mean, it gives you vibes of like Hill House, you know, where people, there are these crazy things that happen at Hill House. If you guys have seen, you know, The Haunting of Hill House or Red Haunting of Hill House, this kind of have similar vibes where you know that there are crazy things and there's a crazy origin to this house. And these characters are definitely going to find out a lot of its very, very dark secrets. And I mean, as you continue on with this book, you definitely see that things get very dark and very sinister. Um, this, I would compare it more to, I, I described it as like a YA version of Insidious meets The Conjuring. And I feel like it's pretty accurate for this book. I mean, it's just, it's very dark and very gruesome and it's very disturbing. And so much of the imagery in here it's just, it's pushing, for me at least, pushing the boundaries of YA. Um, it's very dark. And I feel like even people who don't normally read YA, if you guys like psychological horror, I think would still really, really enjoy this book for what it is. Things get a little bit complicated and a little bit convoluted later on, um, but still things that somewhat end up, you know, making sense in the end but a very, very enjoyable read overall. So if any of these books sound interesting to you in any way, I would highly recommend you guys checking Don Kurtigich out as an author. Again, I feel like she needs more love here on BookTube and in general because, again, I have not heard a lot of people talk about Don Kurtigich at all. I have heard, I've seen one other person talk about um, her book, The Dead House, when it first came out a few years ago, but then since then, I honestly have not heard anything else about this author. So I am sharing her with you guys today. Comment down below and let me know if you guys have read anything by Don Kurtigic and what you guys thought about it. I would absolutely love to know. Before you go, don't forget to like and subscribe. Thank you guys all again for watching and I will see you all next time.